If you are a computer science student, do watch this video till the end. This is your friend, the Lean Programmer, and in today's video, I am going to give you three pieces of advice that you should always keep in mind if you are a computer science undergraduate. So yes, do like, share, and comment on this video. Do subscribe to my channel if you are new here, and let's get started. So if you want to access these slides, you can go to my GitHub repository, which is github.com slash madhavbehel slash slides. So don't forget to start this repository and do follow me on GitHub. So let's get started. First of all, the first tip for today will be don't fall for rumors. That might seem an average or some very common sense advice, but we do fall for it. Let me tell you all the, all the things that all the uh, rumors which I used to hear when I, when I was in my college days, the rumors might have changed a little bit. I am not sure about that, but you might have also heard something similar in your college days as well. And if you are still a college student, you might have heard that you can't get a job without doing competitive programming. Well, that's completely wrong. You can definitely get it because they, they test your skills in problem solving and you can build problem solving skills even without competitive programming. But it is essential and we are going to discuss why a, late, a little bit late. But yes, a lot of rumors like web development is being automated. Don't go for it. Programmers are nerds. Well, programmers are not nerds. Data science is only for people who are good at mathematics. Learn blockchain, this is the future. You won't get a job if you don't do machine learning. Machine learning and artificial intelligence are going to kill all SDE jobs. That's such a big statement to make. But still, you might have, might have heard all these rumors. But the thing with rumors is that they can make a huge difference. Why? Because we take our decisions based on the things that we hear and the things that we see. And our decisions can end up to be a very big mistake or they can end up making us super successful. So we should be fully aware while making our decisions. So how to deal with it? Remember that with every rumor, there will always be a sort of backstory and a little bit of truth associated with it. So instead of falling for the rumors, it is always better to find that particular backstory and go for the truth. It might be even a little bit of truth, but find that one and use it to your advantage instead of just falling for the rumor and panicking and, and, and whatnot. So yes, here are some tips. Here are some steps. First of all, whenever you hear a rumor from someone, ask them, where did you hear it from? Double check the sources. Go to Google and check about it. Follow the latest news in your particular industry or in your particular domain. Follow thought leaders in the domain which you are interested in. These thought leaders generally keep posting about the latest things, the latest trends which are going in the industry that can help you a lot. And then measure how much does that change affect you. And based on all these things, then take a decision. Let me take you, let me take a very, very simple example. For example, you must have heard about this very famous rumor that PHP is dead. It is not dead. The fact is that there are still a lot of jobs for PHP and WordPress developers. But the thing is, it is also true that there have been many, many modern languages like, like Node.js and so on, which has which has gained a lot of new uh, respect in the market, which has gained a lot of new opportunities in the industry. So yes, saying that PHP is dead won't be the truth, but there is a backstory behind it. There is a little bit of truth behind it that a lot of new, new languages like Golang, like Node.js, Dino, and all these things are coming up and they are making their own place in the market. So instead of just giving up on PHP, on just giving up on whatever language did you learn from so many years, it is always better to maybe keep doing your job and side by side learn those new languages which are coming in the market and then you will be, you will be in for an easy transition from old and legacy software to new softwares. This was just an example, but keep in mind the whole point was don't fall for rumors to make any irrational decision. Second thing is college is the best place to explore your potential. So get the taste of everything while you are still in college. Let me explain. 
how to do it be a jack of all trades and master of one or a combination of few well you might have heard wasn't this quote like jack of all trades and master of one i believe that this particular quote is very very outdated and does not work anymore because let me tell you even if you become the master of one particular technology on one or one particular domain and leave everything else apart from it wouldn't it become too boring for you like you are just doing one thing and the sec my second point here is what will be the differentiating factor between you and between the others who are skilled at that particular technology or that particular domain you it will never be the scenario that you are the only person who is skilled in any particular field there will be a lot of skilled people there and it does not matter how skilled are you because it is not a competition going on there is no rank 1 or rank 2 unlike in the colleges or unlike in the schools in real world there is no rank you just need to be skilled very skilled at any particular technology and then there is no competition but what i am saying here is what will be the differentiating factor between you and the others who are also skilled at that particular you know, technology so here comes my particular quote which is be a jack of all trades and a master of one or a combination of a few so when we explore so many things we come to know what we are good at and what we are actually interested in and then we can actually select a lot of them from a lot of them giving my own example i have explored a lot of domains like like let's say android app development ios app development a little bit web development back end development um, and and so uh, so much more like a little bit of blockchain uh, blockchain and a little bit of machine learning and so on B and i have also worked on very various areas like i um, know content writing i know how to make youtube videos i know how to create a podcast and so on uh, while doing all these things from my college days itself i found myself to be very good and interested in in these particular few things which is front end web development public speaking content writing and so on so i made that particular this combination of these few things plus my own style to become a unique factor that identifies me so let me repeat this this super amazing thing again be a jack of all trades and a master of a combination of few that helps other people recognize you that makes you unique so yes the whole point here is college is the best place to explore every potential that you have so get a taste of everything but make sure that you select one thing which you are skilled at as well you don't want to be a beginner at everything right and the third and the last tip for today is do not do not ignore the importance of dsa yes i myself said in the beginning of this video that um, competitive programming is not 100% required for getting a job but this is also true that dsa is an important core subject of computer science and you never know when will it be helpful for you even in your job even if you are a front end developer there might be scenarios where you might be thinking of which data structure to use for this particular thing and and all these things so yes do not ignore the importance of dsa not for not for the greed of getting a job but for making maybe maybe for making yourself a better engineer so let me tell you i'm not uh, asking you to become a hardcore competitive programmer not everyone can be one neither am i one not everyone wants to be one I, even i don't want to be a hardcore competitive programmer because i love development i love software development so yes understand the importance first of all college on campus placements focus a lot on testing your problem solving skills secondly recruitment in tech giants also depends on your skills in this particular area plus having a good knowledge about data structures and algorithms and a few other core subjects can actually help you improve the efficiency of your code so this is super important right and then how to do this firstly understand the importance as i told you in the above slide that it's not not that it's absolutely essential or necessary but it can make your life more easier by by a few things like it can get you a good job plus it can uh, make you write efficient code then 
block one hour maybe every day or maybe alternate day or maybe once in every three days based on how much free time you have just one hour in every two days won't be a difficult thing to take out and then during this one hour make sure that there are no distractions and you are focusing either on studying a particular concept or a particular topic or you are solving a coding problem just by doing this you can yourself notice the difference within within six months or within a year and you will see how much far have you come how much more now you know about this thing and that's how we do it and that's a simple way to do it so yes that's it for today. Do subscribe for my weekly newsletter, which is the Lean Letters. I am going to start this from January 2021 and I'm super excited for it. It's tinyletter.com slash the lean programmer. And if you are new to my YouTube channel, do subscribe to my uh, YouTube uh, channel, which is youtube.com slash the lean programmer. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Bye bye.